something new today, a new series on my channel. Maybe. If this video goes well, maybe. You see, I haven't done a lot of shooting recently, the weather's been bad, I've had a few personal things going on, and I'm just, just in a bit of a photography trough where I'm not going out much, I'm not creating much, but don't worry because like, in about two weeks I go to Patagonia, Chile, Argentina, that kind of thing, and then immediately after getting back from that trip I go to a very exciting uh, location with a little mini adventure, which I don't want to tell you about because I just want it to, for it to be a surprise, <laughs> drop that bombshell. Uh, so that's going to be cool. Um, so when I'm in a bit of a bit of a trough like this, uh, I like to turn to my comments and my emails to see what people are talking about and what people are asking, to see if I can create any content around that. And a lot of people are asking about locations. Um, so some people may be planning to go on a trip to places I've been or want to go somewhere I've been to and want more information. And I thought that this would be a great idea for a video series where each each week or each couple of weeks or each whenever, I create an inspirational video where I review a location that I've been to. You know, it may inspire you to want to go there yourself, it may help you out and give you information if you're planning to go there, or it may just be something for you to watch and dream about. I don't know, it depends. They're gonna be locations that are local to me, locations from all the way around the world. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. If you're looking for inspiration, and you're thinking you wanna go somewhere new to expand your landscape photography horizons, then definitely stay tuned for my new possible series of, yeah, whatever. I haven't got a title for it yet, but we'll see how it goes. I'd just like to thank Squarespace for their continued support of my channel. If you need a website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton. So, the first location that I want to talk about and review, if you like, is one of my favourite locations that I've ever been to. It's beautiful, it's exciting, it's, it's accessible, um, it has everything that I look for in landscape photography. And that is La Malaliga in the Highlands of Iceland. Now, I'm not going to try and pronounce that name again, so we're just going to call it Landman from now on. Landman is an area in the highlands of Iceland and it's beautiful. It's like you're on another planet. Now Iceland is famous for its south coast with its black volcanic beaches, glacial lagoons, epic waterfalls. And that is, that is great. I love the south coast. But do you know what I love more than the south coast? Landmalaloiga. <laughs> Landman. It's fantastic. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's talk about why. Why Landman? Um, it's, it's just, it's a great location that offers the feeling of real adventure and it feels like you're off grid um, and off the beaten path. But really, it's very safe, very secure and very accessible. The photography opportunities are second to none. You know, you can shoot detailed abstract images of the colours, textures, patterns on the mountains. You can shoot wide, epic, panoramic scenes of the mountains and the valleys. You can go on a two or three hour hike and shoot images from high up. You can shoot two or three minutes from your tent. It offers so much. There's a hot spring there. Well, it's not really a hot spring, it's more of a hot, warm, cold spring. But you know, you can relax in the hot spring and you know there's there's nothing there other than a single campsite so it does feel very remote and it's kind of like safe adventure that's the feeling i get from it so you you don't need 
loads of experience in the outdoors. You don't need to be super fit because the hikes are all fairly tame. And you, you are, there is an abundance of photography opportunities. And the best thing is um, it's at its most accessible during the summer months. So you get 24 hour daylight, and beautiful, beautiful golden light from like 10 at night till 3, 4 in the morning. So let's talk about accessibility and how to get there. Um, so just Google how to get there. It's, it's, Google Maps will take you there from Reykjavik, fine, whatever. But you do need a four wheel drive car because the main road going into the valley is an F road, which is a gravel road. Any four wheel drive car will do this. Now, what the car rental companies won't allow you to do is cross any rivers in your vehicles because it avoids the insurance. Um, so you're not allowed to do river crossings. Now to get to La Malaloiga, the campsite, you do have to cross a river. However, that river crossing is only about 50 meters from the campsite, okay? So you don't have to cross the river. You can just park up next to the river, get out, walk across a little footbridge, boom, you're in the campsite and you're ready to go. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's very accessible. The local authorities close the road for the spring melt. But other than that, the road is open all year round, but you definitely can't drive there in winter. You can, you can go on an excursion on a big souped up 4x4 mega Jeep. Um, but you know, if you're doing a self-drive, you want to be going from mid to late June through till September. Um, and the, the authorities will open the road at around mid June, but it varies depending on weather conditions. So when you get there, there is only one campsite. That's it, right? There's, there's no hotels, there's nothing. Just a, just a campsite. Uh, there is a like a bunkhouse with dormitory style sleeping bag accommodation. Um, and then there are toilets, showers, and then yeah, camping. And there's a hot spring and a small shop that's on a bus. Um, and it's very expensive. But yeah, the campsite itself is terrible. It's awful. You know, this is a review, so let's review it. The campsite is one of the worst I've ever had to endure. Um, <laughs> But what it lacks in everything, it makes up for in location. So let's talk about why it's so bad. Uh, the, the, the pitches where you set up your camp, it's either incredibly boggy and wet, or it's incredibly hard and rocky. And that's because it's, it's not a blooming volcano. You know, you just got to learn to rough it. You whack a ground sheet down, get yourself a good air bear and you'll be fine. The toilets are disgusting and they stink, although they are regularly cleaned. They don't have a sewerage system there, so you get that kind of festival smell. Um, yeah, it's horrible. The showers, they're nice, but they are incredibly, they're expensive. You know, these things are. And again, I understand it because of its location, it's very remote. Um, but yeah, showers are expensive. Toilets stink. Campground is hard and the shop is expensive. But other than that, it's a great, it's a great campsite because where you're situated, you are in the valley, you're surrounded by the most breathtaking scenery. So that's the campsite. Uh, let's get on to the photography. Now, the first thing you're gonna do is once you, when you set up your camp, you probably are gonna wanna sleep. So if you're there in the summer months, you need to flip your routine upside down. You wanna sleep during the day and you're going to want to photograph at night time. And that's because the sun can set, I don't know, anywhere from 11 o'clock at night and then rise again at two, three in the morning and that changes day to day as, as obviously we move through the season. Um, but you get beautiful, beautiful light. Like that, because the sun barely dips below the horizon, you just get hours and hours of glorious light and that's when you want to be out shooting and another advantage to this um, and going out and hiking and shooting at midnight is there are no other people around see um, Reykjavik run day tours to Land Malaloiga so you get like coaches these big souped up coaches with like 50 60 tourists on you get like 10 of them coming in at a time and their campsite is packed rammed with day trippers but during that time, you want to be sleeping. All the day trippers will go home. Most other people will go to their tents and sleep. And this, this is when you want to be setting your alarm, getting out of your tent, packing your hiking gear, packing your camera, and going up into the mountains to explore. Now, they're not really mountains. They're, they're, they're more like volcanic peaks. Um, 
all the trails are very accessible, very clearly marked, you would do well to get lost. Um, you always have a clear view of the valley, pretty much no matter where you are. Um, you know, the terrain is very kind of sharp, you know, it's very up and down, so um, you, you've always got a good view. So it's, it's unlikely that you would go wrong. My recommendation for places to shoot uh, would be uh, the top of Blue Mountain, or as it's pronounced in Icelandic, Blanjukur. Did I do well? <laughs> Probably not. Blanjukur is, uh, that means Blue Peak, and it's this prominent mountain, and the campsite is pretty much at the foot of this peak. Um, and the hike up is, it's a ridge walk basically, all the way up, so you can't go wrong. If, you, if you're going uphill, you're going in the right direction. Um, and the, 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 the colours of the mountains and the surrounding valley are phenomenal. To get to the summit of the Blue Peak is, for me, if I wasn't taking photographs, I reckon I could get from the campsite to the summit in about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, but when you're with a group and you're carrying camera gear and you want to stop to take photographs all the way up, um, you're probably looking at, you know, allow two and a half hours just to get to the summit. Take your time, enjoy it, because there are definitely two or three photo points to stop off on the way up to the summit to shoot. Um, and that's mainly the adjacent mountains in the valley, which are this rich golden yellow colour with this beautiful patchwork of snow, if you get there at the right time and the snow's not melted. As you continue up the ridge to the top of this mountain, when you get to the peak, there are more epic views. There's this like, there's this, I don't know what you'd call it, this, this weird pinnacle that kind of, you have to be a bit brave to walk along it and climb up on top of it. But if you're into your Instagram selfies, that's where you need to go. And that is also a fantastic viewpoint for more abstract images of the beautiful multicolored mountains. If you continue up and past the summit looking any direction, north, south, east, west, you are going to get fantastic views of the surrounding scenery. You've got volcanic lava fields, you've got more peaks, you've got valleys with rivers, hundreds of rivers running down the valleys off into infinity. It offers panoramic wide shots, it offers close-up detailed shots. You know, that hike is should be your first hike because it's beautiful and it's not too strenuous. Of course you don't have to go on an epic hike to enjoy photography there. If you're just having a bit of a lazy day or you just don't fancy getting up the mountain, you just want to relax your way into a bit of photography, there are locations to shoot just from the tent. Like 50 feet from your tent there's a river that runs off down into the valley. You can explore the shore of that river, there are many islands and pebbles and you know, different parts of the river as it breaks up, and all of these offer fantastic foreground leading you up to this beautiful valley with the mountains coming in. And that's 50 feet from your tent. You can't go wrong, just have a bit of a wander down the river and see if you can find some interesting foregrounds to make use of, uh, of those beautiful mountains in the valley. And then if you want a less strenuous hike rather than going up, you can go past the dormitories and the hot springs and that will take you into a lava field, you walk through the lava field, you get to the steam vents, explore with the steam vents, take some photographs there. It's pretty cool. If you continue through the lava field past the steam vents, you end up in this sort of big meadow and there there's cotton, there's a huge expanse of space, small rivers, reflective pools. If you continue on to the back, then you've got more kind of ridges that you can walk up and get open views of this huge expanse of space, this big valley. And again, all very easy to navigate, very accessible and so much to explore. You know, just, you can't go, you, you will get so much diversity with your images from this location. And I think for me, that's one of its main attractions is the quality of hiking, the quality and the safety of the adventure and the diversity of images you can get. Another hike that I would recommend is this one. Now I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, so yeah, let's just move on. This hike is excellent. This, this starts from the car park where the river is, so if you've if you've not crossed the river in your vehicle, you will have left your vehicle in this car park, that's where the hike starts from. And again, this offers a different perspective of the valley from the Blue Peak that you may have hiked earlier. 
Um, this is fantastic. This is, again, it's one of those hikes where you need to stop at least three or four times because every time you round a bend or go over a crest, it opens up a new view, new opportunities. Um, and it's just ab absolutely stunning. It is, it's fantastic. And it always feels very safe because you know where you are with these hills. You know, these are volcanic peaks. They are where they come out of the ground and straight up, no messing around. Um, very easy to navigate. Um, and I would definitely recommend this as an alternative to Blue Peak um, and just, yeah, get some fantastic epic shots. That's the best way to describe it. So what about gear? What gear are you going to need? Uh, you, you, need a, a, you definitely want to go for a few days. So you're going to need to take a tent, sleeping bag, good airbed or you know sleeping mattress because the ground is horrible and rough and rocky and it's no good um take an eye mask and earplugs because you want to be sleeping during the day um, and you want to be out and about during the midnight hours take hiking poles because you definitely will want to get up some of those some of those volcanic peaks take a tripod obviously that goes without saying uh yeah photography gear take a long lens you will you will need a long lens because there are you know, a wide lens is obviously needed and gives you that beautifully epic view and there, there are tens of compositions to be had with a wide lens from just one single location. But if you have a long lens, then you can go in and you can break apart that epic view and you can dissect it into hundreds of compositions. So not just one big view, but lots and lots of little vignettes of the landscape. So take a long lens, take a wide lens, take some filters because the sun's gonna be low on the horizon for a lot of the time. So you're gonna want a grad filter or shoot bracket. That's up to you. I don't care what you do to be honest, but just know that you know, you're gonna get that, um, you're gonna get that contrast between a bright sky and a dark foreground. And it's, even though you're there in the middle of summer, it's still pretty cold, can get cold, can get windy. So just take some warm clothing, a nice micro light jacket or a down jacket that you can shove in your bag. And then when you get to the top of the mountain peak and you wanna stop, set up your camera gear, wait for the light, you're gonna be warm, comfortable. So jacket, hat, gloves. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. That's that's about I can recommend you know just be sensible. Take gear that you need for camping. Take some nice food because it's expensive to buy it there, um, and just enjoy it. And that that is pretty much my review of Land Malaga. Beautiful location, a very safe adventure with a horrible campsite, really smelly toilets. But to be honest, that's not what you're going for. Okay, that's a means to an end. You're going for the amazing, beautiful, stunning scenery. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope it's been of help. I hope it's been of interest. I may do it again with another location somewhere that I've been to. Um, yeah, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this channel. If you don't know who Squarespace are, they're a website. And you go onto their website and you build your website. So you build your website through their website, Dead Easy Drag and Drop System. Um, so if you want a photography website or online store to sell prints or anything like that, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton and give it a free trial. If you like free trial and you want to spend your very hard earned money, um, use the off code Heaton for 10% off your first purchase. And I don't usually say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Please do leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this video um, because I enjoyed, I'm, I'm enjoying making it and um, I really do think it might be of use to a lot of people and it's something I'd like to do again. So yeah, right. Thank you for watching. Until next time, bye for now.